For the kingdom of heaven is like a man travelling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received five talents went and traded them and made another five talents. And likewise he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground a hole and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of the servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents. Luke, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I... I knew you were a hard man, repaying where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what's yours. But the Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have disposed the money into the, with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him, give it to him who has ten talents, for to everyone who has more will be given, and he will, will have an abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May the Lord add his blessing to his word. Thank you. Brother. Sorry, it's a different translation. Not used to that one. I've left my Bible at home like a plonker. Okay, I'm entitled this, has God gifted you? Have you asked that question? Has God gifted me? Has God put gifts into your lives? We should be asking that question. Over the last few weeks, as we've come together as this new church, we've uh, had some sermons. First of all, the first one we had was our identity is in him, remember? And then we learned that those who wait upon the Lord the believer who waits upon the Lord, seeks him, shall renew his strength. He shall run and not grow weary, and so on and so on. And then last week we heard about the race. We're all in a race. We're running a race, and the goal is a glorious finishing prize, but it takes a little bit of discipline. We've got to discipline ourselves to that run. We've got to keep our eyes on that tape and go for it. But there is a wonderful prize for those who endure and run for the Lord. Okay, this week we're talking about the talents. And I want to tie it in together and maybe the Lord's speaking to us as a church as we are coming together fast and quick. God's put his structure through the church somehow and he wants to speak to you very clearly, I think, from his word. This is as I've prayed and as I feel led. So God wants to speak to us about the talents. He's bestowed upon us talents. And he's done this to each individual believer and he's looking for return. And you need to keep that in mind. God is looking for return, as we learned in the story. Okay, uh, let's go back to this um, parable. Parables, as you know, are given to illustrate deep spiritual truths. And this parable Jesus gave, if you go back to verse 1 of verse 20, chapter 25, it's talking about the kingdom. In that day will be like this, Jesus said. So what is that day? It's talking about, in its context, which you've got to look at it, is the period of the Great Tribulation. And these servants is better rendered slaves. They were his workers, his slaves. And they belonged to him. They were his. You know, in them days they had slaves and they belonged to them. But here these slaves belonged to him. They were Jewish believers living at the time of the Great Tribulation. And their Lord has gone away and bestowed upon them great wealth and he's looking for return when he comes back. And their blessing and their joy is entering into the the Lord's joy when he comes back is into the millennium kingdom, into that reign. But this parable, 
I believe, has a great meaning for every dispensation. We are living in the day of grace. We're living under the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're alive in that now. And this parable comes to us just the same. So let's look at it. Notice, first of all, Jesus was talking about what? The kingdom of heaven. What is the kingdom of heaven? It can also be translated many times in Matthew and different ones, the kingdom of God. So we know that the kingdom of heaven is where? It's the realm of God where he is, where he rules, where his kingdom prevails and his authority. That's what Jesus was talking about, the kingdom of heaven. So we need to have that in our minds. So Jesus was talking in this parable about the kingdom of heaven. And this is where his authority is. Remember Jesus said to us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this is where God's authority is. And so the church is where God's rule is on earth. And this wicked and perverse generation in which we live, this world that is God-hating, God-despising, the church is here and it's God's rule is in the church. His, his will is done in the church through his people. So that is here on earth. And we're a part of it. Who is a part of the church this morning? It's those that are saved out from that world brought into God's family and kingdom as we heard through the gifts this morning we are his and he is ours in a unique way we are born again of the spirit of God and we belong to him as servants or if you like slaves yeah okay we are born again blood bought I just want to flick a scripture up there for you Peter says this redeemed not with silver or gold but with the precious blood of Christ so we are blood bought that means we are, were slaves to sin, habitually sinning, but Christ came and saved us and took us out of the world to himself and has given us a power in our lives and now we are his slaves. Okay? Let me give you another scripture. Let me elaborate on this a little bit so you might understand it. Peter, Paul says this. He says, a servant, or it's better rendered, a willing slave of Jesus Christ. Okay, separated, or called to be an apostle, separated, that's sanctified, set apart for the gospel of God. And that's what we are this morning. We're slaves of Christ, willing slaves, and we are set apart, sanctified, to the gospel. Yes? And it's, we are to proclaim this gospel, the kingdom, as willing slaves this morning. And I'll elaborate a little bit more. I'll put you there a scripture, and it's an Old Testament scripture about slaves. When it was their time to be set free, what they wanted to do was stay with their master. And so God set a rule down for them. And what was to happen was the slave would, and the master would go to the gate, to the elders, and he would say, I want to, I love my master. That's what he said. I love my master and I want to stay with him and serve him all my life. And so what he had to do, the master had to take his ear and take it to possibly his own doorpost or the gate doorpost of the temple, and was to take an owl, a long needle, and to push it through the earlobe and pierce his ear to the door. And there he was saying, I am a servant forever, your slave, because I love my master. Isn't that wonderful? So Paul was saying, I am a servant, I am a willing slave of Jesus Christ. Are our ears pierced this morning? Have you said, Lord, I want to serve you with my life this morning? He, there they were in a declaration to the community that they loved their master and that they would serve him at least until the jubilee well jubilee will come when jesus christ comes back so we are saying then i am a servant of jesus christ i am his slave a willing slave because i love him okay let's get back to the story the master when he came back called his slave workers to himself no, sorry, before he went, sorry, before he went to the gym, he called his slave workers to himself. I remember at school he used to say, right, gather round, lads, at the woodwork class. Gather round, boys. Here the Lord would say to his workers, gather round, come here. And there he would bestow upon these slaves, these workers, gifts of wealth. And you know, uh, one he gave five talents, one two talents, and one another ta one talent. And you know, I'm reminded and I think of Britain's Got Talent. You've seen that program, haven't you? But he doesn't mean that. We think of talent as being, you know, gifted as singing and all kinds of things. But what it means, it's the Greek word is talanta. Okay? It was a great heavy piece of gold out of his wealth. 
And he gave it to each servant. So he gave one five, one two, one one. And you know, when I looked at that word Talanta, one is so valuable that it's worth 20 years wages. What's the minimum wage today? You work it out. One talent is of that much worth. And so we bestowed upon them this great amount of wealth on each slave, each servant. And he gave them, if you notice in the scripture that we read, according to their ability. Yeah? So the five, because he had ability, because he was a worker and he'd seen him and he'd watched him, he said, he's a good worker, I'll give him five. He's a good worker, he's got a certain amount of abilities, I'll give him two. And he is, isn't so good, but I'll give him one. So it was according to their ability. Two of them went to work, you noticed, immediately. Or straight away, they were set to work to put that talent, that talent that was given to them, to effect immediately to get more for the Lord. And that which was given to them, they doubled. Meanwhile, the picture here talks of the, sir, the master that goes away, of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The first advent and the second advent, and in between. He's gone, he's ascended to heaven. And he's bestowed spiritual gifts on his church, on you and on me. He's bestowed out of his abundance, practical gifts, spiritual gifts, blessings into your lives. You might be thinking this morning, well, not me. Oh, yes, he has. You are a part of his church. As we read there, you are blood-bought and precious to him. So he has bestowed upon you some kind of spiritual blessing, some talent, something into your life. Okay? And he's looking for return. Paul puts it like this. Let's have a look in Romans. I don't, hope you can, I don't know whether you can see that very well. Romans 6, 8. And I want you to notice the word grace that's there. We have differing gifts, okay? According to the grace, yeah, given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion of what? His faith. So the bestowal of gifts is through grace. God has bestowed into his people, because that's in the context of the church. Into his people, giftings, blessings, talents. And how does he do it? By his grace. And how does he do it? How do we react to it? By faith. You see, that's quite plain there. If it's serving, let him serve. So you can have a gift of serving. You can serve in the church. You can get involved. We used to even have people standing at the door welcoming people in. To God, that is precious. That's a gift. It's using it in the church. Encouraging. That's a gift. Barnabas was the son of encouragement. He was an encourager. He was an apostle of encouragement. He started waiting on tables, by the way, with widows. And then because he was serving the Lord in such a way and filled with the Spirit, he was called to more ministry, to an apostle. So, be an encourager. You know, there's people in the church need encouragement. Maybe you're going through something and somebody else has been through that. You can draw alongside and encourage. How do you do it? By faith, because God has given you the grace to do it. Remember the talents were given by the abilities. We all have abilities, but the grace we serve the Lord in, in faith. Contributing, let us contribute to the needs of others. Leadership, let us lead and diligently, let us do it. So we do it by faith. This morning, we are leading you by faith. We believe in God. Grace, then, is the bestowal. God does it through his grace, an act. Not saving grace, grace that is given and imparted into your life. Favour, goodness, power, a flow. So Corinthians 10 says this. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. What was he? St. Paul was an apostle. He said, by the grace of God, given into my life to do this, I am what I am. He was a murderer. He would kill Christians. But the grace of God was bestowed upon him to serve him. And in our lives, the grace of God is given. And it was not without effect. So that grace was effective in his life. It's a force. It's an active power. It was not without effect. No, I worked harder than them all. Yet not I, but the grace of God that is with me. So the grace of God is with each one of us. We can't give an excuse to God. Because that grace enables us. Grace is active and powerful in us this morning.
Okay? God has assessed you. He's looked at you and assessed your life and seen in your life's abilities and opportunities and things that he can use. And in grace, he's given you accordingly. Okay? He's given to you and he expects now back from you. We need to think about that this morning. But let's notice verse 16 and 18. These slaves, these workers, had a choice. Two went immediately and set to work what their master had given into their hands. Now one didn't. And how didn't he do it? He didn't do it because of fear. He was afraid, it says. But the others in choice, through faith, went and did. The other, by fear, he held back. Fear will hold you back this morning. It will stop you serving the Lord. Fear is a horrible thing. The fear of men as man is a snare. The fear of what I say, will I be stupid? The fear, fear, fear holds you back. So you think, mm, I won't do it. You need to have courage. You need to have faith. And you need to say, grace is in my life. I'm going to do this for the Lord. Okay? Simple. That's what these men did. Immediately, by faith, they doubled what God had put into their lives, what their master had put into their lives. We have been given opportunity to invest. And that is what these talents represent to us today. What and where do you invest your time, your efforts? You see, you have a choice. It's left before you. Blessings and opportunities have come your way by God's design. I'll give you a scripture for that. Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's workmanship, saved, we're his slaves, created in Christ Jesus, born again, the Spirit of God, which God... Good, which God created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works. Which God prepared in advance, what? For you to do. So actually God has prepared works for you in eternity past, but you somehow now are finding out what he wants you to do. You're not sure, but God knows. He wants you to take the day by faith. He wants you to take every opportunity you, you have by faith because that's God's design for you. He's, by his providences, he's put before you. He doesn't always tell you, but sometimes there's a stirring, there's an opportunity that you can use, a word of encouragement, a gift, a blessing. Do it. And as you do it, as you use it, it will grow. If you don't use it, it'll rust out. Yeah? Yeah? So take every opportunity, invest blessings and opportunities, seize the day. When I was younger, I was very shy. You might not think that I was now because I stand up and speak. I was terribly shy. I didn't want to speak to anybody. I was afraid. But opportunities came. I was in the building trade. And some people, didn't they, have a tile missing out of their house. And as a young man, I went and put a tile in for you. Remember? <laughs> I took an opportunity with an ability that I had to serve people in the church. And then opportunities came to pray. It's good to hear Sam pray this morning. That's great. Carry on with it. Take the day. Because these are opportunities that God is giving you. Are you with me? I was shy. And sometimes, believe me, it's hard to serve the Lord. It's hard because it's difficult. But sometimes, if you put your agenda aside and say, I need to do God's agenda by faith, then it won't be so hard. But it will be difficult if you're shy or if you've got other problems. But take that this morning. Take the opportunity and say, I'm going to do this for God. Yeah? We all have natural talents, but we need to develop them. Okay? Whatever it is. I started with the guitar, but I failed to continue with it. Otherwise, I could have been worshipping today. But Amen. I never, never oh, wow. pursued it at, at the age of 28. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you've got a natural talent, develop it and use it for God. If it's in ministry or if it's in, you know, art or whatever, use it for God. Develop it and say, God, this is a talent in my life and I want to use it for you. Some of you have, I've heard of great singing voices. Use it for God. Invest your talents into the kingdom of God. Listen, I'm glad that we are an open church this morning. That's one thing that we've determined to do, is to be an open church, to share with you, 
to encourage you, to bestow what we can upon you, to get you involved. And I want you to be involved in God's kingdom here in Cheadle, the church. Invest in it. Take the day and say, the church is giving me an opportunity to serve Christ. Then take that. It's going to take your talent. It's going to take your gifting. It's going to take your time. It's going to take your effort. You see, there are things that only you can do. There are things that you do that I can't do. And so God has designed it that way that he wants to use you. So he wants your talent, your time, your gift and your effort. Some had five, some had two, some had one talent. Now God doesn't look at the person and say, well, I'll give him five and I'll bless him more than them. What God has done is given you according to the ability. Some of us haven't got so much ability. Some have got tons of talent. But God only expects each of us, if there's one, to the same person who's got five. He's only looking at you because he's bestowed upon you according to your ability. So he expects according to your ability. You don't have to do any more than what you, what you uh, have the capacity to do. Serve God in that capacity. Even if it's just saying a small prayer, it's pleasing to God. And it's an opportunity to build in his kingdom. Okay, God expects you to do that. And God expects you to produce and to put into his work this morning from your time, your effort, and your talents. Now, sadly, in the story, there was one who was wicked. Remember? When the Lord had come back, he called them to himself. They had a great commendation, the same commendation, well done, good and faithful servant, entered into the joy of the Lord because they'd served him, entered into that joy. But then he called the one who got one. And he called him wicked. Now, we would think this morning by being wicked that he was a murderer. Or that he was a thief. Or that somehow he was a liar. But he wasn't. It wasn't any of them things. Yet he was called wicked. Why was he wicked? Well, it says because he was lazy. He didn't take the opportunity. He did nothing. In fact, he hid what was given to him. He put it in the ground. He didn't do anything in God's kingdom. In fact, he made excuses. And so the master called him wicked. If we make excuses and don't take the time, the life that's bought, blood bought, that we owe God back, if we are saying, oh, Luke, you, you, you're like this God and you're like that, he got a wrong theology of God. He got a wrong theology of his master. And so out of fear... Because of that wrong theology, he neglected it. He got on with his own agenda. And by doing that, he was like burying the talent and burying every opportunity that was put his way. He just hid it. He just did nothing with it. Simple. But when he was called up and when Jesus comes again, the master returns. And one day Jesus will come again and this life will all be gone. This time, this era that we've lived will be swept into eternity. But there will be an accounting and a drawing to him. And he'll be saying, what have you done with the talents and the times and the opportunities that I gave you? Oh, well, I thought you were like this and I was afraid. So I just, I didn't do anything. Well, what's he going to say? The commendation is going to be terrible, isn't it? He's going to be, you lazy, wicked person. Take from them the grace that I put into their life and give it to somebody else who had more. We don't want that, do we, this morning? And I don't believe we're of that. I believe this morning, you people are people of faith. And I believe this morning that the Lord would encourage you to serve him and to take every opportunity. Okay. Uh, let us by faith seize the day. Develop our talents. Use them in the kingdom. Use them in the church. The wicked servant said this, You are a hard man. I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you. He thought he could get away with it. You can't get away with it. You need to serve the Lord with your young lives and the opportunities you have. Even in a middle age, serve. Even in your older age, serve the Lord. The master was angry. And showed up his folly. He said, look, you should have used that money and given it to the bankers. Don't let things get idle. But help somebody else. If you can't do it, then give your help to somebody else. If you've got some money that's lying idle, 
give it into the work of the Lord. This is what this is basically saying. The lesson then is we lose it if we don't use it. Use your talent for God and let God be the judge of it. So to conclude, Scott will come up. <clears throat> what talent do you have this morning? These are questions. What can you do? What opportunity has come your way? Can you answer them questions? Then use it to work towards the dreams that God has placed in your heart. Use the passion, the talent, the abilities to build up his body and increase the kingdom. Amen? Use every talent that you've got to put into his kingdom. How do you know what gifting you have got, you might be saying? How do I know what I can do? Well, others will let you know. Did you know that? Very often people told me, oh, you make a good preacher. Somebody said to you, in your life, you were like this, you were that, and that's maybe God showing you. Or you may feel in your heart a desire building up. Yeah? There might be a desire that's working in you to do something, then do it. And say, Lord, by faith, I'm going to do it. I'm going to step out. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to do this for you, Lord. I'm going to tell that person about you. I'm going to give that money to that. I am going to encourage that person. I am going to pray for that person. I'm going to pray in the church. I'm going to invest in you, Lord, this morning. Can you do that? And then the Lord will give you every opportunity, every providence. Let's start right now. And let's just think with Timothy when he said this. He said this, Paul said to Timothy, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God that's within you. You fan it into flame. You stir it up. Can you do that this morning? By faith. Say, Lord, here am I. Yes, my agenda's got in the way a little bit, you might be thinking. Yes, those things, Lord, that I've feared, I want to put aside. Yes, Lord, by faith, I will see there are talents and opportunities that I have. And yes, Lord, I want to build your kingdom. I want to be involved in Cheadle. I want to give into the church. My time, my effort, my life. Shall we just stand to pray? If you just feel that you just want to say, Lord, I'm sorry that I am possibly hiding my talents away. I'm sorry, Lord, that I'm possibly afraid. Then, Lord, I want to start afresh and say, here am I, wholly available. The fields are white unto harvest, the Bible says, doesn't it? But the laborers, the workers, the slaves are few. And that's through every dispensation. But this morning there's grace, every grace to bless you. And I think this morning, if you pray that prayer from your heart, then God will start to give you opportunities. What have you got to do? By faith, act. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you this morning that, Lord, that through stammering lips and weakness, you've brought your word. But Father, we thank you this morning that, Lord, that we've been challenged and stirred because your word challenges but you're not a taskmaster. You're not that master that's hard. You're a loving master that wants to reward us. Lord, it's us that make you up to be a hard policeman. Lord, forgive us. And Lord, help us to serve you with the talents and the giftings and opportunities that you've given us this morning. Again, to build your church, to invest our time, our efforts, our lives, Lord, this morning. Oh, Lord, that we might hear one day, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, amen.